All right, uh, now let's take a look at three methods that allow us to convert objects into arrays and they're following. If we go with object.keys, we'll get the property names and they will be stored as an array. The same goes for values. Only in this case, we're storing values as an array. And then if we use entries, then we get both. So in my case, I have person object with name, age and status. And then if I want to get the keys as an array, I simply need to come up with some kind of variable name, in my case, that is going to be keys. Now that is equal to object dot, and then keys. And this is the syntax. So we need to start here with this object, and then whichever method we want to go with, in my case, I'm going to go with keys, and then we want to pass in the object. And it's not gonna be surprising if we'll take a look at the console, and we'll see over there, name, age, and status. So all the keys in our object will be turned into array. And at this point, you can work on it, just like any regular array, meaning you have all the methods and properties available to you. And after that, let's take a look at the values method, which essentially does exactly the same thing. Only the difference is that now our values will be stored in the array. So now let me go here with the instances, let me select all of them and let me just retype them as values. And now you'll notice that in the console, we'll have array with the values as items instead. And lastly, now let's take a look at the entries method, which converts both the keys, as well as the values into array. And you'll see what we're getting back in a second. So let me start here by actually changing some stuff around where I'm going to name this one result. And then this one will be entries. And then as far as the value, I also want to log the result. So let's save that one and now check it out. I have three items. And each item is actually an array. And in there, we're storing the key, as well as the value notice how they're saved as array items. So this is something we need to be aware of. Now, like I said, when it comes to result, we can run all the array methods and properties we want. So in this case, let's try using the map method to iterate over and then specifically return only one item. And also we'll take a look at the for off loop, which we covered a little bit earlier. So let's start with map, I'll set up here map method. And then what we want to do is come up with new result. So new result and you know, just so our console is not or no, let me leave it here, because I'll showcase some stuff. So let's say result map. So now we can run our map method. And in here, in the callback function, I want to access each and every item. And we know we could do that if we pass in the parameter. And in my case, the name of parameter will be item. And then to showcase how we can use array, the structuring, why don't we pull out both values? So I know that each item is essentially going to be array, and I can showcase that if I go with log, and then item, which you'll see in a console, of course, are three arrays with these values. Now, if we want to pull them out, we can use array the structuring, where I can say first and second, again, this is really up to you. But in my case, I'll name my first item as first and second one as second. And this one is coming from the item. Now, if you want to console log, you can definitely do so with me. So let's go here with first and second. And now you'll notice that in a console, we actually get both values. And after that, I'll simply go with return and first. So I'm iterating over the result, I pull out both items, first and second, console log, and then I decided, you know what, at the end of the day, I only want to return the first one. So if we go here with log, and then new result. And in this case, I will comment this one out. Now, of course, in the console, we'll see these ones, which by the way, also I want to comment out. And the result is going to be only the keys stored here as values. Again, something that of course, we can do with the keys. But the goal here was to showcase how array the structuring is going to help us. 
And also, let's take a look at how we can iterate with four off loop. So let's say here four off. I'll comment this one out. And then we're looking for a syntax, of course, so four. And then let's come up with a value. Again, I'll start with an item, but we'll actually change this one around again to array the structuring in a second. We're iterating over and same deal. Basically, you can just copy and paste this whole thing here. And then if we log, the result will be exactly the same. So first and second, let's log that and check it out. Now we have the values. Now, the reason why I want to showcase four off because actually, we can skip this line entirely. So let me comment this one out. We just want to grab this code, and then replace the item. Now, actually, I will leave this one for your reference here. But the idea is that since this item is an array, we can right away do array the structuring. And notice how our result did not change in a console. So if that's the case, then you can just pull out whichever values you want. In my case, that is first and second. But of course, we have multiple options over here. So that's how we can use object keys, object values, as well as object entries to convert objects into arrays.